From Studio B at KPRC Channel 2, Houston Life starts now. Well, happy Wednesday, everybody, and welcome to Houston Life, September 16th. We are cruising right along. How you doing, Courtney? I'm great. How are you? Well, we've got a lot to get to today. <laughs> it's going to be an exciting Houston Life. And it's always good when we have wine on set, right? But so we true. do want to mention that Houston Mayor Sylvester Turner is expected to hold a press conference during the 3 p.m. hour to announce a new anti-littering campaign. Listen to this. Targeting improperly discarded face masks, gloves, and other trash related to the COVID-19 pandemic. You can see the podium there. They have not get, yet begun, but we will be streaming the press conference live on our website. That's clicktohouston.com in case you'd like to tune in. That topic has definitely been a heated one with you and I. Oh, yeah. Well, in fact, I'm tempted to walk off the set right now and go tune into that press conference because when it comes to littering, it shouldn't just be masks and gloves, right? I mean, it, it's everything. It just part of being like a decent person and realizing we live in a large city. We're sharing this space together. And if you dump your trash everywhere, it's not so nice. I know. Diapers. It's all kinds of stuff. But right now it's masks and gloves and, you know. So people do. The other day I saw on my street a guy sitting in his truck and he finished whatever he was eating uh -uh. out of the takeout bag, uh -uh. tossed it out the window and dropped it. Oh yeah, and we also have new neighbors who just moved in and they have this large black dog. It's a cute dog, right? Yeah. Oh yeah, it loves to drop an... It's doo-doo? It's doo-doo. Um, and they just sort of like, they watch it and then when it's done they... They're Bring like, him in. Come back in. I'm like... Dude, this is on your like, lawn. It's it's on the adjacent Shared. property where okay. new homes are about to be built, but it's still like a grassy area that other people use. I mean, kids are out there, and anyway, that's a topic for another day, or is it? Because today is what's your problem Wednesday. <laughs> it's actually kind of a perfect topic, littering for the day. You know how I feel about littering. I, I don't care what it is: masks, gloves, cigarette butts, whatever. Clean up after yourself. It's I saw very somebody simple. dump out. Must have been a full-on ashtray in a parking lot. Who's, no. Who has ashtrays in their cars anymore? <laughs> but it was a full-on ashtray in a parking lot next to the cassette player. It, absolute <laughs> cassette player. <laughs> if you like fruit wine as much as I do. Oh yeah, we're gonna get to that. Messina Hoff, and this is great because local vintner. <laughs> <laughs> What's the difference between a, a winemaker and a vintner? I don't it's know. It's the same thing, right? I think so. Not sure. We need to get to the bottom of this. And it's embarrassing because on Wine Club Wednesday, uh, we were sort of like the pseudo ex experts. Today, we will get into everything we all need to know about Messina Hoff Winery, plus a virtual wine tasting, Courtney. And we're pretty good at that because mm -hmm. all we have to do is mm. drink up. This is very nice. This is their rosé. I've had this before, and I love, love that we're focusing on Messina Hoff, a local label, right in our backyard. So we're going to have fun with them on our virtual tasting today. And really, honestly, Derek, I should have worn black today because I am in mourning. Oh. I haven't had a chance yet to call my mom, so she does not know this. And if she's watching right now, mom, clutch your pearls because I'm going to share some information with you. You're going to drop to your knees. I know it. The Nutcracker Market is going virtual this year. There will be no in-person shopping. Well, that's reasonable. I mean, that's... To we understand, understand yeah. right? I mean, it's not canceled, but it's only an online shopping event. We have gone every year. This is an every year tradition. tradition. And let me tell you something about my mom. She has kept the programs, like the thing, all of them. When we moved from, when we were packing, no, listen. Even she, when she moved, she kept those she kept programs? Them. She kept them. Wow, that's dedication. Yeah, so it's sort of like the, the playbill for her. She's got the, the New York playbill. It's the Nutcracker Market. I'm telling you, the only year we did not go was in 2007, because that was the year I just gave birth. I tried to go. It just didn't work out. <laughs> I just said Connor, and I thought, Orlando, it's just right next to the doctor. Can we just, can I just run in? He's like, no. Yeah, because his birthday is early November, right? Yeah, November 4th. And it was like the first doctor visit, you know, the first adventure out of the house. That was the only time we missed it. 
I know. So it's going to be free access for all shoppers. The new dates now. Listen, it's a month-long shopping extravaganza virtually, November 11th through December 11th. Nearly 200 vendors, though, will be on a separate platform to be able to get your shopping done. And a portion of the sales will benefit, of course, the Houston Ballet Programs and Scholarship, the Ballet Guild, which yeah. allows these young children to have scholarships to go to the, the ballet school uh, that otherwise wouldn't be able to afford it. Yeah. And it's really incredible. Um, and it's sad, but we hope that so many of you will continue to support the market and uh, hopefully we'll do it in person in spring. Yeah, you know, I love the market as well and I've done the spring market yes, with you. Yes, we've and, had a uh, lot of fun. Winter, you know, market with my mom and it really is true what you just said, the scholarships that help so many yeah. uh, young people in our community who wouldn't otherwise be able to study with one of the best ballet companies in the world and then yes. they go on and they do incredible things. So when you're shopping, you're really sort of paying it forward because you're getting a little something for yourself or you're buying gifts plus you're supporting this incredible foundation and all of these vendors who yes. have really, really taken a hit this year during COVID. So it really is a fantastic way to uh, to shop and get involved. And we're going to hear a lot more about it in the coming months. Absolutely. you got to make your plan. I've already been talking to some of the girlfriends. So we're planning sort of a virtual happy hour. Going to log into the shopping and just sort of do it together and figure out what this looks like. But we definitely have to support the vendors. Many of these vendors, this is their livelihood. This is what they do. Go to these shows all year. Oh, yeah. This is and one of the biggest sales. One of the biggest for the ones. whole year for a lot of these vendors and for a lot of these businesses, they are not able to, you know, carry on. So we've got to be able to support them too. Support the vendors, support the scholarships for the ballet, and again, get a little something for yourself in return. Hey, so have you seen this trending topic online about the almost name? Almost name? The, like the name that you almost had. Oh. Or almost given. Like yes. So it's okay. a new thing. People are talking about this online. And over the years, my mom and I have had many conversations about how my name almost yes. was Sam. Which, Sam? <laughs> see, it doesn't fit, You're not right? a Sam. Or Samuel, Samuel Shore, Sam Shore. No. I like the name Sam. I do, too, but you're Derek. I mean, it's just you're not a Sam. But you also know me as Derek. So if you knew me as Sam, would I be a Sam? And would that make sense? No, it would not. It would not. Yeah, sometimes I meet someone and... I, th I think like, oh, nice to meet you, Patty. Are you sure you're not Karen? Right. You know? <laughs> right, it happens. So sometimes you meet people and you feel like their name doesn't quite fit. Right. So what if you were a girl? Did your mom have a girl name picked out or would it have been Sam, do you think? I think probably Derica. Derica. Okay. Which is also a really great name. It's a fat... No, I see Derica. That, I really isn't do. Isn't that a pretty name? <laughs> I had... You know, I have two birth certificates. <laughs> That sounds fraudulent. It does, but one is says baby girl. Oh. Yeah, because there was a there was a bit of a controversy when it came to naming me. So originally Why? my mom wanted my name to be Lana. <gasps> That's right, but yeah. like Lana Turner. Yeah, but she thought Lana Zavala kind of sounded like a showgirl. Which is okay, because actually at six, that's really what I wanted to be. So the name actually would have fit. <laughs> well, you wanted to be a showgirl in Vegas. Yes. Now you're a showgirl in Houston. I mean... I mean, and then, you're a girl on a show. Right. So it just kind of all comes full circle. But my dad, my dad wanted all of us to have the initials RTZ, like him. So my two brothers are RTZ. And then it came to me. And my, and my dad said, well, her, and my dad's name is Bob, Robert. And so my dad said, well, I mean, her name's going to be Roberta. Which... <laughs> <laughs> And let me tell you, I'm I, laughing because our stage I, manager Ray just about snorted. jumped. <laughs> Roberta, now listen. I've never heard you snort like my, that. My aunt Rob, aunt Roberta, Bobby, love her. She's my absolute favorite, absolute. But my mom said, "Oh no, we are not naming her Roberta, because now we've got a Bob Senior, Roberts, Bob Junior, and now we've got Roberta." What? This is not good. So then she she bucked the whole RTZ thing and went with Courtney Victoria. Oh. <laughs> so, she there took was a left a turn. Left turn. But Courtney was also sort of on trend, you know, for a while. Like there are certain names. There were there's a there's a generation of yes. like Jennies and right. Rachel. But I was the only Courtney I knew for years. Really? Yes. Oh, I knew a bunch of Courtney's growing yeah. up. Could never find anything with my name on it. It was a big deal when you're growing up. Never oh, found anything. With I my could name never on find it. my name on any of the keychains. You go on vacation and you look for the magnet or Nothing. the souvenir. No, they. I, once in a while, when I would see Derek, it would be spelled D-E-R-E-K. Yeah. 
Or D E R I C? No. Or D A R Y K. I mean, spelled I've seen incorrectly. some interesting spells. Yeah, spelled oddly. I remember one time at Claire's, my mom, or I think it was Aunt Rob actually, found a cute little makeup bag for me and she put tape on it and wrote Courtney because she couldn't find oh. one with my name on it. I remember that. I know. That is really sweet. It's really sweet. That's very nice. <laughs> my mom's name is Bobby. Yeah. So B O B B I E. Yeah. And you know Bobby Brown, makeup artist, yes. with the just B O B B I, yes. right? And people have sometimes thought like, oh, Bobby, like it's short for Roberta. Her name is just Bobby. Just Bobby. Bobby is not a nickname. Bobby is, and you know me. I mean, I'm such a fan of androgynous names. Billy, I think Billy Holiday. I'm a huge oh, fan of I her love, music. Yeah. And so I think it's fantastic when uh, you know generationally. My grandfather's name was Shirley. Right. That was a big name back then for a man. It was? I think so. I think you so. You know that we have baby photos of my grandfather in a dress? Yes. That was customary back then. Like for... a christening dress or something like that? Yeah, like yeah. it was customary to put baby boys in dresses. Yeah. So it's always interesting to me when these people like, men shouldn't wear a dress. Um, well, who says? Yeah. Who says? We make the rules, right? We do. Um, there are no rules, we've discovered. My mom was going to be named Sherry Lynn, and I didn't remember this until she actually wrote into Houston Life. We asked you guys, our viewers, what was your almost name? And mom, Sherry Lynn. I mean, Sherry Lynn is beautiful, but I like Bobby Sharon. I do too. I like Bobby Sharon. But she goes by Sharon, right? Her, which is her middle name. Right. But technically her first name is Bobby, but I call her Bobby. Brandon calls her Bobby. Right. Bobby. I always get confused when I see her because I'm not sure if I should call her Sharon or Bobby. One time I said Miss Shore and she said, there's no Miss Shore here. <gasps> yeah. But you know, she, you know, she wanted me to call her, but I was confused because you always say Bobby Sharon. Sharon Shore has a nice ring to it. It we does. We used to get mail for Sharon Stone all the time. Oh, how funny. Residual checks. Love it. Cash them immediately. No, I'm kidding. So we mentioned What's Your Problem Wednesday, and today we thought uh, we would actually share a couple voicemails. We love hearing from our viewers, and we have a very persistent viewer who wanted to be sure we got her messages. And so, should we go for it? Let's do it. All right. Uh, I'd like to leave a message with Courtney's hair that she's always flipping that hair back and she would wear it back, pull it back from her face. You could see her face. She's too busy, you know, shaking her head and putting her hair back with her hand and, and uh, why not wear it back and whether she can concentrate on what she's saying half the time. She would look so much more young too. Thank you. Okay. Okay. So shaking your head. I don't think you shake your head very often. I don't know if I do. I don't think I don't you know. do. I don't know. I mean, we all sort of naturally shake our heads a little bit in natural conversation, right? I guess it's bothersome. It's not bothersome to me. Thank you. I think you're great the way you are. So I'm, maybe this viewer thought we didn't get the first message, but we've actually gotten a handful. So we have a couple more. Let's play the next one. Please tell Courtney to quit putting that hair dangling around her face because on the show she is constantly flipping it back and the color of it does not do anything for her face. Tell her to wear it back from her face. Just do away with that extra hair she puts on there and have her normal hair, okay? Thank you. Hmm. So I think that last part said, do away with all that extra hair you p put on there. Yeah. So I feel like we've, we've discussed this at length, no pun intended, on the show. But can you just set the record straight now, Courtney? Just h how many hair extensions are you wearing? I, I'm, I'm here to tell you the number today, and it's none. Zero. This, <laughs> this is my hair. It's all mine. I'll lift it up for you. There's no, there's no tape. <laughs> I don't want to touch it because now I'm going to make her mad, but there's not, there's no tape. There's nothing. It's just that. That's your hair. And I think your hair looks fantastic. Okay. I think, well, there's one more, right? I, yeah. <laughs> there's one more. Okay. Let's go for it. I watch the Houston Live every day and I uh, want Courtney to know that she looks so good today with her hair pulled back. She's got a pretty face and she's got a pretty smile. I thank y'all so much. Bye-bye. Okay. 
Well, cheers to that. We saved the best for last. We <laughs> saved the best for last. <laughs> cheers, that's very nice. Interesting, people feel very, very invested in uh, your hair. Mm hmm I know. Here's the thing, my, you know, I'm just, I'm gonna leave it here. I'm just gonna leave it right there. I just, I don't know what else to say. I really don't. Well, listen, I think you're perfect the way you are. I like your hair, and I think, I agree, you have a very pretty face, and however you want to style your hair to complement that face, your choice. What's interesting is, is we actually tried to call her yesterday, but she didn't answer. <laughs> so maybe, maybe another day we'll be able to. <laughs> you know, um, but we do get, we do hear the voicemails <laughs> that, that, you, that you call every day. It is interesting. When you're on TV, don't you find it just fascinating that it's sort of like this open invitation. We, we love that, you know, we have this dialogue with right. people. But it's just very interesting the amount of unsolicited advice that I get, too, about what I'm wearing, how my face looks, my hair looks. And I'm thinking, you know what, I'm just here trying to... Just do this my, is my job. job. It's my job. <laughs> but thank you for that advice. The other thing is too, and, and we say this all the time, if you saw a complete stranger that you didn't like their hair at Kroger, would you tap them on the shoulder and tell them? No. Oh, I do it all the time. I know, me too. Yeah. <laughs> No. But you know what I'm saying? Okay, so you know last week you had a story for me about the wedding invitation and what you should do with this gift because the wedding happened by the time you got the invitation. I didn't send the gift, Okay. in case you're wondering. So today, I got this bizarre text message from a phone number. Like, it didn't, in my contacts, do you remember a couple months ago that I had my phone numbers and contacts in my phone? Oh, we're all wiped. We're wiped. So when someone messages you, you don't see their name. You so just it see happened the phone with number. Jerry Martin, our GM. His his name now was disappeared. It was just a phone number. It happened with Aaron, one of our producers. It happened with just different people, and I wouldn't know until somebody would message me mm -hmm. that that had happened. Yeah. Back in April, I also had to do a hard reset on my computer, which wiped out a lot of my contacts. I'm just, I'm just saying, like, this is what happened. This back happened to me once in and April, it, and it was very frustrating. So today, I get a, a text from this person that basically is very hot, very hot off the presses. I was like, what kind of hot? No, like mad, and starts off with my apologies for bothering you. I thought you'd at least respond. Dot, 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 to my last, and I'm reading this and I'm thinking, I don't even know, this is clearly a wrong number. I don't know you because your name is not, and there's nothing ahead of it. There's no other message that I missed. Oh, do you know who this is? So I responded back and said, uh, who is this? I have no other message. I don't know, who is, who is this? Never responded. So what I did is I went back to my computer because sometimes now since that hard reset, some texts, Rachel McNeil, this happened to me. She sent me a photo. I never got it, but it went to my computer oh, yeah. and not my phone. So I went and on my hard drive, on my computer, I looked to see, did I, what is that? Who is this person? Maybe it's a wrong number. Well, it's not. It's not. I do know the person, but I never got said message that I never responded to. So why didn't they follow up if they didn't I don't hear know. back from you? And I say, don't know. Like, Hey, but I called her. She, of course, didn't answer because probably saw it was me calling and thought, oh, I'm not going to come, even though I just sent you a nasty text. And um, so I said, clearly there's been a misunderstanding. I don't know what you're talking about. I'd like to clear it up. Please call me. Nothing. How bizarre. Yeah, some people are um, very impatient. Also, on any given day, especially in a job like this, I constantly describe it as like trying to drink out of a fire hose. Yes. So if some, you and I could have a conversation right now, and then I'm pulled in a different direction before the live show, and I completely have forgotten what we've said. So what it's do I do? I mean, I have already called her, right? So I don't need to do anything else. Yeah, I mean, you followed up, but I, I don't know. Mail her some downers? I don't know. Mail her a bottle of I wine. didn't get it, so I don't know what happened. <laughs> I didn't. I wasn't ignoring your message. I just didn't. I get never it. got it. Oh, I'm sorry. Well, but at least you know that oh, about well. this person. Here, we, here's one. <laughs> <laughs> I 
These you know are going to be really handy. Can we use these while driving? I'm going to keep them in my car. <laughs> I'm going to be honest with you. These are these fabulous. Are Okay, right. guys, from making jokes on Twitter to having their own late night show on Showtime, this is really fun. Comedians DeSeuss and Mero share their secret to connecting with the younger generation. That story's next. Welcome back. After creating a cult following on social media for their irreverent take on news and pop culture, comedians DeSeuss and Miro are changing the late night television landscape with their loose but very smart commentary. Reporter Joe Sam chatted with the quick-witted duo about how they're connecting with fans through a new book and virtual book tour that's taking them to the South. First of all, congratulations on another great season. I've been following along with you guys for so long. Y'all are all the way up, and y'all just keep rising. Thank you, bro. <laughs> Thank, Thank you, you, man. It's dope. Thank Thank you. That's my praise. We in here, man. You know, it's amazing. It's, it's Absolutely. How's that feeling? Just being into another season and just continuing to rock out more and more of those episodes, and y'all just jam pack them with so much energy and so much fun and so much comedy. Y'all keep us laughing from the beginning to the end. Thank you, man. It's just fun to do, especially right now with the quarantine and everything. You know, everyone's, people are still locked in their homes and stuff. People aren't out as much as they used to be. So we know, like, now it's appointment viewing. Now we know, like, people, <laughs> it's not like people are like, yo, it's on demand. They're like, at 11 p.m., they're like, yo, where are you at? Where are you at? We want these new jokes. So even right now, we're on hiatus. So we, we're getting a lot of mentions and stuff. People are like, yo, you better talk about this story when we get back. You better talk about this story when we get back. But 2020 is so wild. We get back on Sunday, y'all not even gonna care about any of the stories that already happened because something <laughs> brand new is gonna come out. The news cycle in 2020 went from 24 hours to two hours. You know what I'm Ooh. saying? So like every every two hours something new happens and we gotta talk about that for two hours and then we switch topics. It's like Twitter in real, in real life. It's real life, of, of course, Sunday and Thursdays, premieres at 11 o'clock on Showtime. Right. So we want to make Showtime. sure we push that out for people who have been living under a rock and have Come not on. heard about the show. So you guys have had so many people on this show too, mm -hmm. so many celebrities. We've had we've had Spike Lee, we've had Alicia Keys. I want to talk yeah. about one of your most recent guests that has mm -hmm. impacted the community in such a big way, especially the black community. We're talking about Black Panther, our chat with Bozeman. I mean, you guys done an incredible yeah. interview with him. How was it being able to interview him and how has it affected you guys? Yeah, you yeah. know, like they say, hindsight is twenty twenty, man. And, and being there in that moment, not knowing what he was going through, and, and him still still giving that energy and that light and that that you know that you know that not typical interview like yeah you know yeah we did the movie yeah what kind yeah whatever you know what I mean just engaging and being engaged and being there being present and mm -hmm. and spreading that and you can feel the vibe through the whole studio there was never a moment where you were just like yo. Is he all right? Yo, his energy level isn't right. Because he even, you know, like people say his appearance was changing, but he always was on 100. He was always mm. super positive. He was always that guy. He'd walk into the room, and the room would just light up because he had that good energy, and he was just such a good person. And it really makes you take everything in perspective now because you already had corona out here, but yeah. now you got someone as loved, as beloved, and university like this Chadwick isn't here anymore now. So it makes you realize, like, every moment isn't guaranteed. You got to, like, squeeze the most out of life while you get it. When we talk about being from the Bronx, but you transcend to so many different communities. I mean, Texas people love you. And yeah. when we talk about the Houstonians, we want to make sure that we mention to them, what, what is it about you two that just transcends these audiences and make it to where everybody just falls in love with you? Yo, first Would of all, H-Town stand, H -Town H -Town stand up. You know what it is? Because when you see us, you're like, oh, that's Jesus and Mel from the Bronx. But the more you listen to us, and once you strip away the sp uh, New York specific slang and locations and the dressing, you're like, yo, OK, no, that's Jesus and Mel from the Fifth Ward. That's you know Jesus I mean? and Merrill. That's my cousins from down there. That's my this Jesus and Merrill. I know them from Miami. Like every hood has a Jesus and Merrill because every town got a hood. So when mm -hmm. you see us, you're like, yo, those remind me of people I grew up with. Those remind me of people at my job. Those remind me of me and my boys just chilling, just talking, just talking crap about what's going on in the world. And it's mm -hmm. that universe, it's like that. It's like we're not like, yo, we're from New York. So look at this through a New York viewpoint. We're like, yo, we just happen to be from New York talking about the news. Yeah. Ignore the accents, ignore the slang. You could if you listen long enough, the the accent disappears, the slang disappears, and right. we're just your homies. And when we talk about relating to people, not only do you have the podcast, you have the show. We have a book that's going to be coming book. out. 
We gotta, right, know, we gotta know about the book. First of all, we're gonna give you a hand clap on that. Too. Thank you, thank you. Yeah, so God I'm level, saying. knowledge darts. What is the book about? That's what people need to know before we get in there. We know you guys do comedy, but this is gonna be a life learning book. How do you mix those two together? This is about, you know, paying rent when you when you don't have it. You know, eat, getting a, a meal when you when you don't have it. You know what I mean? But we put our own twist on it to make it funny. You know what I mean? Because a lot, some of this stuff is not funny. Being hungry is not funny. But mm -hmm. we've lived these experiences and we're passing them along to y'all. Where can we go to get it? And then again, how can we join that virtual tour that you guys going to be doing? Listen, so the virtual books, tour. You can go to Amazon.com and get the book. You can go to Barnes and Nobles. Just search mm -hmm. it there because it's available pre-order. So it comes out September 22nd. Some of y'all already pre-ordered it. Shout out to y'all. But it's still available. You got plenty of time. And then if you mm -hmm. go to BodegaHive.com, there's still tickets available. We got more shows coming up. We might be adding more shows if demand is going. Listen, you can get it either way. You get the podcast, you get the show, you get the book, you get the virtual book tour. You can go to OddFellowsNYC.com to get our ice cream. Listen, we got all types of things going Everything, on. Man. So listen, the most important thing for y'all to remember is that the tour, like my man said, is not area specific. So if you happen to be around at 7 p.m. Central on September 20th, it don't matter where you live, pull up. We here. Houston! Texas! Texas. There we go. We got to go ahead and rock that out. Deces and Meryl, thanks so much for joining us. We can't wait to see what you guys have for the book. We can't wait to see what you guys have in store for the show, for the podcast. Keep doing amazing things. We hey. love seeing you. Ace time. And to be part of the Jesus and Merrill virtual book tour, we have shared a link on the Scene on Houston Life section of our website. I want that shoe collection, too. I was just going to say, the sneakers, <laughs> amazing. Stuff. I love catching up with those guys. Great job, Joe. And we'll be right back with a look at what's coming up on the news at 4 o'clock. All right, welcome back to Houston Life. Why don't we get a check of today's headlines with Keith and Lauren over in Studio A. Hi, guys. Hey there. It is hump day. We're making our way toward the uh -huh. end of the week, getting closer to the weekend. <laughs> That's yeah. always good. Yes, counting the hours. Just a few shows away, right? <laughs> <laughs> Channel 2's Robert Arnold was the first Houston reporter to head east and chase after Hurricane Sally. In fact, he's been doing that all week. He was in Alabama this morning when Sally made landfall officially. And he's been traveling parts of the state, checking out the damage left behind. He will have the very latest on the conditions out there. That is ahead at 4 o'clock. All right, we're talking weather, so let's check in with Frank and another area in the Gulf. The Bears watching, Frank. Yep, I want to talk about Sally and the Bay of Campeche. This is Sally. 5 o'clock in the morning made a landfall. The, talk about the clean side and the dirty side of a hurricane. It's easy to see. Look at these rain amounts here. As much as 2 feet in some areas of Florida, Biloxi picking up a half an inch of that. So there you go. That's the way these can work. But believe it or not, there's a minor coastal flooding in Galveston and Bolivar because of Sally, and coastal flood warnings are in effect until tomorrow morning. This picture is from Jim Benz of the Galveston Boat Club there. So there's Sally. This is the one we're watching, Keith. This is on Invest 90L. 30 mile an hour winds with this. It's not really moving much, but if anything, it's moving a little north right now at two miles an hour. 70% chance to develop over the next five days. It's really going to meander down there before making a move. So we'll talk more about the tropics and that, that system specifically. I have some spaghetti models to run on that at four o'clock. And also that weekend front we've been talking about, we are still talking about all at four. Key. Okay, also coming up, you're going to meet an 81-year-old man who's been instrumental in bringing in musical acts from Mexico into the Houston area. Our Bill Barajas is talking to him about music, culture, and surviving as a business during a pandemic. Should be interesting, and we're also going to tell you why McDonald's is running out of burgers. Yes, you heard that correctly. Mickey D's is having a difficult time apparently keeping burgers in stock. See how the shortage is connected to a well-known Houston celebrity. Something tells me the Kardashians have something to do with that. Um, I don't know. <laughs> no, no, listen, because my boys are all about it. It's not the Kardashians. Wait, Keith, why do you say that? When in doubt, blame the Kardashians? <laughs> no, well, <laughs> just the particular celebrity that I'm thinking about who might have a recent connection to McDonald's. So I'm just trying to connect the dots. No. <laughs> not no? close. Am I wrong? Yeah, not close. Not, oh, wow. No. I honest, I have no idea. No can I, can oh. I give you a hint? Yeah, please. Yeah. Initials are T.S. T. Travis Scott? That's right. T.S. Yeah, that's what I'm talking about. Oh, oh okay. Yeah. Oh, you're right. To the other one. Yes, I'm sorry. I always see? go to, yes, you're right. 
You're we're, right. We're on I the forgot. same page. We, we were on the same page and didn't even realize it. I know. I, that's me. <laughs> I, we've already been twice. The boys are obsessed with it. Oh, my gosh. Oh, yeah. Okay. My 11-year-old was very interested as well. Oh, only I know. as a result of the naming. <laughs> All right, guys. Thanks for that. We'll see you at 4. All righty. And cheers, because it is Wine Club Wednesday, y'all. Still ahead, we are learning more about local winemaker Messina Hoff. We will be right back. Cheers. Houston Life, this is Elise and Lucas, the Espinosa family from Houston, Texas. We're so excited for your new chapter and we'll be watching you every day. Hi Houston Life, we are Los Luceros de Rio Verde and we love watching your show. Can't wait to see you back in the studio. So Bye. Bye! Hey Courtney and Derek, it's Veronica here in the East End. Congratulations on the new 3 p.m. time slot. I hope to see you soon. I have a margarita with your name on it. Oh, my gosh, Veronica, we will uh, take you up on that. One of my favorite neighborhoods in the city, by the way. And I love her wall and hearing from everybody, of course, Elise and Lucas from State Line Designs. Los Luceros. I know. Oh, cheers to y'all. We love all of the viewer shout outs for sure. So, so sweet. We also love the viewer comments that have been rolling in about your <laughs> almost names. Here's a comment from Bradley, Sean Patrick. He was supposed to be born on St. Patrick's Day. Well, that seems very fitting. I mean, that would have been perfect, You like right? Bradley, though. Bradley works for you, dude. Okay, Kate wrote in, Peter Joseph. Throughout my mom's pregnancy, they thought they were having a boy. Oh, well. <laughs> well, Peter Surprise. Joseph, now Kate. <laughs> and Brenda writes in, my middle name, K, is spelled differently on all my birth records. Oh, my I'm not word. sure how to spell it. K-A-Y or K-A-Y-E. Maybe they just had given mom pain meds. <laughs> not sure. <laughs> wow, you know, Brenda, I think that's more common than we think. I think my so. My grandmother, my mom's mom, we never knew when her birthday actually was or just how old she was. Turns out we celebrated on June 13th, but it's still we a mystery. We never know. I yeah. love it. Great stories. Okay, guys, looking for a way to keep your kids safe while still allowing them to practice their favorite sports. Oh, right now, it's strange times, right? Well, Lauren Kelly is at Pure Soccer Institute over in Katy, and Lauren, tell us what it's all about. <laughs> Stretch out, girl. <laughs> <laughs> well, you guys, I am here. I've got my soccer shoes on, and I am standing in front of the goal. I'm ready to tell you about a brand new soccer facility that's indoors that's got a unique way on practicing and safely practicing soccer. So I'm ready to tell you guys about this coming up next. Don't go anywhere. <laughs> you guys, I'm in Katy today at Pure Soccer, <laughs> dribbling my way into some really fancy new equipment, and it's a safe way for kids to learn, for pros to train. It's amazing. This mm -hmm. equipment was not around when I was younger. I'm I here know. with Taryn Siegel, your head of yes. marketing here at Pure yes. Soccer, Katy. Mm -hmm. Let's talk about this wonderful facility mm -hmm. and how you guys are safely letting the kids play uh -huh. and get their physical activity in. Yeah, so we are, um, you know, just over a year old, and we're really excited because we are now partners in development with the Houston Dynamo team, which is just speaks to, you know, kind of what we're doing here. Um, you know, a lot of the kids that come here are wanting to be that professional player or get on the D1 college team or even just start on their first team, you know, and so, you know, we're able to give them that opportunity to, um, you know, get to that level that they want to of course. achieve. And parents, mm -hmm. I'm sure their first qualm or their first exactly. hesitant is, are these kids that usually play on a team of 11 or mm -hmm. 12, are they going to be spaced out? Mm -hmm. Are they going to be socially distant? Yes and yes to all the above. Mm -hmm. You're taking all the necessary all the precautions. safety precautions. Mm -hmm. Exactly. And we have one-on-one -on -one training. Um, and again, you know, team settings right now are a little scary for some parents. And so, yeah, we do provide that one-on-one -on -one training where they're not in a huge group of kids where it's, you know, may not be so safe. So we do provide, um, you know, all the safety precautions. What I want to point out in this amazing indoor facility is that, see this little line, this curtain behind mm -hmm. us? This kind of breaks down into eight different spaces. So mm -hmm, exactly. you can literally be one-on-one -on -one coaching far enough away from your coach mm -hmm. and away enough from everybody else as mm -hmm. well. There's plenty of space for everyone to exactly. spread out. Exactly, and you still get that skill development. Mm -hmm. Taryn, I want to talk a little bit about not only the soccer training, the mm -hmm. sport, but you also have a classroom that yes. you've introduced as an institute. You'll have a teacher on mm -hmm. campus for kids who actually are homeschooled mm -hmm. or are learning virtual, which is a great way for them to still get out. Yeah, exactly. So, we, you know, with this current environment, we have this new opportunity to, um, you know, kind of create a soccer intensive homeschooling program uh, where kids will come in for half the day and they'll do their homeschooling program with our qualified teacher, it's Miss Jackson. Um, she has over 20 years of experience um, just in KDISD, so she just has been awesome. And then they'll also do uh, the soccer part training 
um, out here with our uh, director of player development, which is um, Everick. So they get, you know, the, the education part, and then they also come back and train as well. Such a cool idea. And I also want to point out this new machine. You guys, yes. I played soccer in high school, and I was a goalie. I broke my wrist. It was a bad <laughs> scenario, okay? But I didn't have anything like this. This is the mm -hmm. toca, which in Spanish means touch with mm -hmm. your foot. Can we see how this works? This is like basically a pitching uh, ball, mm -hmm. but with soccer balls instead of baseballs, right? So can I go over here and we can yeah, show how this works? Okay, look. I'm gonna jog over Everything. here. And this is re activated by a remote app on his phone. Oh. And it can teach you speed, it can teach you precision, and you can be at the beginner level like me. I should pay attention. <laughs> okay, I'm ready. I'm right, so yeah. ready. Yep, yeah, okay. Okay. This is regular speed? Okay, oh god, that's a little. <laughs> you have to be super quick, but okay, I'm ready for another. I'm ready. I'm ready. I'm ready. It's like the anticipation I've made. <laughs> oh God, oh God. So yeah, um, I guess practice does make perfect here at Pure Soccer and Katie. I just wanna point out that all of these kids have just been completely socially distanced the whole time we've been here. There's also a field in the back if anybody would like to go outside as well. I've got all the info if you guys wanna be a part of it, which is super fun. So thank you guys for showing us the facility today. <laughs> and uh, HoustonLife.tv for more info. Derek and Courtney, I'm gonna go kick some balls now. Yeah, Lauren, okay. we're impressed. You're really good. So, I know, before the break, you blocked that goal, girl. Nice job. <laughs> Three. Three. I know, I'm sorry, three, not just one. No, you did nice great. Thing, I'm very impressed. It makes me wish I hadn't quit soccer, soccer after just one day. Yeah, one day. I, d I mean, that's a true story. It happens. One, oh, day? Well. one day? Great facility, Lauren. Thanks for taking us inside. And glad they're socially distant and getting kids out to get their workout in for sure. And yes. a fantastic place, too. Uh, we Coming up, we are sharing the best wines that bring family together. Yeah, we're back with Wine Club after this. Welcome back on this Wine Club Wednesday. Today we are featuring a Texas winery that values family and is passionate about celebrating together over a nice meal. The three wines we'll be tasting today are designed for just that. Messina Hoff Winery co-owner Karen Bonarigo is joining us now. Hi, Karen, along with two of our Wine Club members, Tom and Sandy Wills. Hi, y'all. Welcome to the show. Oh, Tom and Sandy, they have their wine in hand, and just let's make sure you two are not muted because we want to hear your lovely voices. Tom and Sandy, uh, I want to start with you, and we will get to the wine in just a moment, Karen, but I understand you're both retired. You live in a senior living community with about 1,000 residents. Sandy, you're retired sales, and Tom, retired chemical engineer. That's right. right. And the reason we live at Eagle's Trace is because we've been on over 80 cruises in our travel what? history and eagle's trace to us was like a cruise ship that didn't move oh my word perfect well i'm glad you both have time to drink some wine watch some houston life and today we're going to learn a little bit about this label that so many people know and love i know well let's get started we have karen bonarigo is messina hoff co-owner karen it's so great to see you we are such fans of messina hoff and i know we've had the rosé before on the show and uh your spread is fantastic but what i love about messina hoff it's all about bringing the family together Absolutely. So this is a family business. Uh, my in-laws are actually the ones that founded Messina Hoff in 1977, and the first year that they were married, and it was a labor of love and a passion project, and it evolved from there. And now we're second-generation ownership with uh, my husband and I running everything, and our kids have been involved. And so uh, wine is very much part of what we do, and uh, and we'd love to be able to share it with people, and the best way to do that is at the dining room table. And the, so the dad side is Italian, the mom side is the German side. Explain to us how this marriage uh, created this label and what really sets apart your wines from other wines. So uh, they started back when there really weren't that many wineries in Texas. Uh, we were the fourth winery in the state and now it's pioneered to be over 500 wineries. So it's a really exciting industry to be part of and it's still booming. Um, but when they first started, it was an experimental vineyard on the piece of property that they had bought. And they had named it Messina Hoff after where their families were from. And so my father-in-law's family is from outside of Messina, Sicily. And my mother-in-law's family is from outside of Paul from Germany. And so they wanted to honor where they had come from. And so they named the new place that they were starting their family um, Messina Hoff. And so that's how it originated. And since the vineyard started there, that's where the winery eventually was built. And now it's expanded uh, quite a bit in four decades to be in uh, three different locations and a fourth location that will be 
opening in Richmond outside of Houston, um, hopefully by the end of this year. Oh, that is fantastic. And I love learning story of the story behind the label. And that is so awesome. Okay, who's all ready to get this tasting started? I know we are, and we have a beautiful Riesling on tap. And I know um, Tom and Sandy, they have theirs poured already. They're saying cheers. So let's get started with this Riesling. So this is our 2018 father and son Riesling. And so uh, Riesling is a really beautiful varietal that's very flexible with food. Um, it's an off dry, so it has a little bit of sweetness. You know, when it says dry, it means no sweetness. So off dry means a little bit of sweetness. Uh, so this will have just a touch of, of kind of honey notes to it and apple and pear, um, but really fantastic with a ton of different food options. And it's possibly the most versatile wine to have if you don't know what someone enjoys um, because it seems to be a lot of flex with quite a bit of uh, dishes that you put on the table. All right, Tom and Sandy, we want to know your feedback. And we should have mentioned off the top that, Tom, you actually have your own wine club, I understand, with about 250 members. And once a month, you organize your own little sort of like tasting and education thing. Yeah. So you, we, we are talking to multiple <laughs> experts right now. It's a lot of fun, Derek, but unfortunately, we've been inactive since March because of the pandemic. Of course. Of course, but typically you like to feature a variety of reds and whites. So tell us your feedback, Tom and Sandy, on this Riesling. Well, normally I'm a dry wine drinker, mm -hmm. and this is a delightful uh, off dry Riesling, and it's uh, bold enough to go with some really spicy food, maybe Thai or even Szechuan. Mm -hmm. I love it. Sandy, what do you think? I think it's fabulous, and I want you to see, if you can, the snack plate that we prepared for today's show. Oh, my goodness. Well, look at that. So fancy. I love it. Well, and the raspberries go beautifully. Oh, right. Beautifully with this wine. Okay, well, we're coming to your house next time. After COVID, Actually, of course. I know, right? <laughs> yeah. Okay. okay, and this comes in at $13.99. Fantastic. Okay, so let's move over to the one that we were drinking, which is your rosé. And this is a blend, too. Right, Karen? So this one is actually, so the 2019 Vintage is actually 100% Dolcetto. Uh, okay. It is named Sophia Marie Rosé. It's named after Paul and I's daughter. Uh, she just turned 10 this year, and uh, we've been officially back in the business uh, with Paul's parents for 10 years now. My husband was in the Oh, and I think we uh, we sort of having some technical issues here. We may have lost you, Karen, oh, for a second. Is. But you are back, are and I think that's so sweet. <laughs> so that this is named after our daughter, Sophia Marie. Uh, in 2010, she was born. It was the first year that we were uh, back as a family of four mm. um, in, at Messina Hoff, and so we named the wine after her. Uh, it came from the estate originally, and now it's a dry style rosé um, from 100% Dolcetto. And uh, it's a really beautiful medium body rosé, actually, which gives it a lot more weight to be able to pair with all sorts of really exciting dishes, um, saltier dishes like cheeses and charcuterie um, and all sorts of different things like that. But then you can also ramp it up to things like grilled vegetables um, if you're doing a cookout in the backyard as well. It really is a beautiful, this is probably the third time that I've had this wine and I absolutely love it. And I do know that this is a fan favorite for those that know and love Messina Hoff. Let's get uh, Sandy and Tom's take on this one. I know you've got your charcuterie there. So uh, do you guys like this one? This is a, a bright and refreshing rosé. Reminds me of a picnic on a hot summer day. All right. Well, and also, how, how nice to have a wine named after, I mean, Sophia I Marie. It's so beautiful. Listen, we got to run to the finish line, Karen, with this last wine. This is a Syrah. We got less than a minute, so go for it. Tell us all about it. So GSM is a Grenache Syrah Mouvedre blend. Fantastic, super dynamic, dry red, great with everything meat-oriented. So if you're doing burgers all the way up to really nice steaks, this is a fantastic pairing. Oh, that is very nice. And Tom and Sandy, before we say goodbye to everyone, tell us your thoughts. And uh, I know you've dabbled in winemaking yourself, so you feel inspired? I, I love a GSM blend. This is a beautiful one, and the tannins are really d delicious. And before we end the segment, I'd like to give a toast, if it would be all right with you. Mm -hmm. Of course. <laughs> I'm a one wine lady, two at the most, with three, I'm under the table, and with four, I'm under the host. Oh, oh dear. Oh, oh. <laughs> we love you guys. Well, look at that. We're out of time. <laughs> Cheers. 
Thank oh you so much, gosh, Tom, I Sandy, Karen. It. Thank you. Karen, thanks so much. By the way, y'all, if you're not part of the wine club yet, what are you waiting for? And if you are, check out today's wine club article on our website. There you're going to find out how you can be a part of the live tastings as well. Cheers. Didn't see that coming. And <laughs> speaking of wine tasting, we'll be right back with how you can enter to win a getaway for two to the Texas Hill Country. Don't go away. Whether you love wine tasting, shopping, or just relaxing in the Texas Hill Country, Fredericksburg is the perfect road trip destination. And you're in luck. We're teaming up with the Fredericksburg Convention and Visitor Bureau for the ultimate midweek getaway. Enter now on our website for your chance to win a two-night midweek stay for two in the Inn on Barron's Creek and a half-day wine tour with two... Uh, for two with Majesty Tours. It sounds so civilized, doesn't it? it? Does. Plus, gift certificates to Cabernet Grill, Das Peach House, and Fredericksburg Pie Company, and two passes to the Pioneer Museum and the National Museum of the Pacific War. Well, the contest runs through November 24th, or September 24th, I'm sorry, September 24th, and you must be 21 to enter. And for all the rules and regulations, you can check out our website, HoustonLife.tv. And with that, on this Wine Wednesday... Cheers, everybody. We're going to say goodbye, but we're going to say hello to Keith and Lauren over in Studio A ahead of Channel 2 News at 4.